What's happening, Boot Junkies? Mike Delgado here, back with another video on Home Studio Setup for VoiceOver. And we have a new mic in the booth today. This microphone is the Pure Tube Vacuum Tube Cardioid Condenser Microphone from Lewitt. This is very new. It's only been around for a couple of weeks. If you saw my interview with the COO of Lewitt a couple of videos back, uh, Moritz, he actually let me use this microphone in a little secret area. So I've actually had a chance to use this one before. I've had it now for a couple of weeks. I've gotten to record a little bit with it. Let's talk about some upfront sort of front matter, though, that will help inform the rest of this video. Lewitt did send me this microphone. So there is the paid promotion thing. However, I'm not sponsored by Lewitt. They didn't pay me anything. They just sent me the microphone and let me keep it in the hopes that I'll make a review in the hopes that I'll talk about it. If you've watched my microphone reviews before, you know that I don't really make a recommendation for or against. What I want to do is I just want to let you hear the microphone as much as possible, put it in context with other microphones so that you can get a sense for how this one sounds, how this colors the sound. We'll talk about the specifications. We'll talk about use cases. If there's anything that I find that's right or wrong with it, I'll let you know. Uh, but otherwise, I'm not here to tell you to buy it or not to buy it. I'm here to help you make the most informed decision that you can. Does that make sense? I certainly hope so. And in the meantime, you'll get to hear the microphone quite a bit. If you look at the marketing material, look on the website for the, the Pure Tube, they specifically call this out as being a microphone that is optimized for voice. This actually has me really interested. You don't often get a mic that's just like optimized just for voice. They'll be like, yeah, it's good on drum overheads and it's good for trombone and it's good for, yeah, if you want to sing into it too, sure, that's fine. And so this one, they don't talk a lot about other instruments. They talk about this being a voice optimized microphone. That's interesting. If you're unfamiliar with like why you might have a tube microphone versus not a tube microphone, really what happens in a microphone is your voice causes a vibration of a diaphragm of some sort and it vibrates ever, ever so slightly, ever so slightly. It's just the slightest vibration. And with the power that's applied to the microphone, that very, very, very slight vibration causes a variation in electricity. It's ever so slight. The microphone then has circuitry inside it that takes that variation in electricity and amplifies it. That can either happen with like uh, transistors. Uh, so you might hear a microphone be described as a FET microphone or an FET microphone. There's a transistor that amplifies that, that signal, or you can do it with a vacuum tube. Vacuum tube is sort of the precursor to the transistor. I'm going to hand wave and be science, you know, I'm not sciencing this, but the, the vacuum tube itself allows the flow of electrons to be modified in such a way that the sound gets amplified. But it does it in a slightly different way than the transistor does. To the ear, to the way you sense the sound, it may sound a little bit different. And for many people, the sound of a tube microphone can be more pleasant. Tubes, because they actually involve a little bit of heat and there's more power that's required, the tube microphones have an external power supply that does whatever the microphone needs to make that tube get nice and hot so that it can do the thing that it does. So there is a different dedicated cable that goes between the microphone and its power supply. It's not just a regular XLR cable. So the tube microphones, in exchange for that perhaps more preferable timbre, the sound, you pay a little bit of a price in the sense that the microphone needs to warm up a little bit. For the brand new microphones, for the first 10 or 15 years, the microphone, it's going to warm up in yeah, 30 seconds. By the time you turn it on and get your script placed in front of you and getting, re getting ready to go, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come up to temperature. In 10 or 15 years, maybe that tube will take a, 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 take a little bit longer. It, it, my experience, it, it takes a long, long, long time on the order of decades for it to really, to really change. Anyway, so tubes, tubes have some, have some trade-offs. Separate power supply, separate cable. They do generate a little heat. And in exchange for that, you get, no pun intended, you get a nice warm sound out of the microphone. That's the goal anyway. Interestingly, when we look at the specifications, the, the charts and graphs 
for the pure tube. It's actually a reasonably flat microphone. And in the world of modern current sort of contemporary microphones, that's actually pretty interesting. Many of the microphones and some of the ones that we'll, we'll compare this one to today have a what they call a presence boost. A presence boost that usually from the could be 5k, 6k, 4k, somewhere in there up to maybe 12 or 14k, there'll be this boost this hump so it's often described as a presence boost gives you airiness gives you the sense of detail this microphone is generally flat through those areas there is a little bit of a boost above 10k it looks like it's about 12k to 15k again bringing some airiness in giving the sense of detail and openness to the microphone but that's generally a little bit above where the typical sharp s sounds are so if you do know that you've got a sharp s Perhaps a microphone like this one that has a warm sound without that presence boost, perhaps that will make a difference. On the other side, this microphone naturally tends to roll off the bass. And that can be okay for voice because so much of the time we roll away the bass anyway. We get rid of the rumble. We strip away everything below, say, 80 hertz. And so this microphone is naturally taking that rumble away. Again, it's optimized for voice. The price point of the microphone, there's there's two different price points on the on the Lewitt website. It is uh, it can, you can buy it as just the bare microphone, or you can buy it as part of what we see here, which is called the studio set, which just includes. Ah, oh, isn't that nice? It includes a tool a two layer metal pop filter that just is held in place by magnets and a very large but very robust quick angle, a uh, quick release angle shock mount. So if you've ever adjusted like the seat on a bicycle, there's just a lever that you move on the back. When I think about a microphone that I'm spending a thousand dollars on, especially one that's delicate as a tube microphone, I also want to make sure that it's packaged in such a way that I know I will be able to keep it safe for years to come. I've reviewed microphones that cost a thousand, twelve hundred dollars, and they come in a cardboard box. And that's fine when you get it, it makes it to you, but then you have this really delicate precision piece of equipment that you want to have around for years and you have to hang on to a cardboard box. Lewitt does not do that with their premium microphones. This is the case for the, the pure tube. It is made of hard plastic. There's specific foam cutouts on the inside. It is made to last. You've heard now me talk about the microphone. You've heard the microphone for you know, 10 or 15 minutes, whatever I've been yakking on about. But I think in order to really appreciate how this microphone sounds, I think it's very helpful to put it in context with other microphones. Other microphones that if you're making a purchasing decision might be on your radar. And this is not to show it sounds better or worse than any other microphone. That's not what these are about. At this price point, at the $1,000 price point, all the microphones I'm gonna show you are going to sound excellent and they're going to perform extremely well. They're going to sound different. Part of what makes these microphones $1,000 microphones or $800 microphones is that they, they aren't absolutely truthful to the source. They do introduce something different. Like we talked about the, uh, the presence boost. There are some frequencies that will get boosted. There are some like we talked about here that cut away some of the bass. They will be tuned in such a way that they will introduce their own sense of character in the same way that a Telecaster doesn't sound like a Les Paul. They're both excellent guitars, but they sound different. You with me? But I think you can't appreciate the sound of a Les Paul without also hearing a Telecaster. So you can decide which one you like. In the same way, we look at the microphones. We listen to the Pure Tube and we're going to listen to it compared to other similar microphones to help you decide, oh, that's the sound that's right for me. So we're going to bring some other microphones in. Okay, I've set up a first microphone here. The first one that we're going to, microphone that we're going to compare it to is the Lewitt LCT 540 Sub-Zero. And I feel like this is probably a natural comparison to make because if you were saving up for your first really forever voiceover mic, the Lewitt 540 Sub-Zero has gotten a lot of good praise recently. Um, it's an excellent mic, extremely low noise floor. And this might be the mic that you're saving up for. And all of a sudden you get the pure tube that comes out and you go, oh, wait a minute. Now we've got a tube microphone that's optimized for voice. Boy, I wish I could hear what the difference was between those two. Different price point, different technology that's inside. But these, I think, would both be natural choices for a voice actor, depending on which sound 
you like. The 540 has an extremely low, low noise for like 4 dBA, something like that, about as low as it can possibly be. The Pure Tube also has an extremely low noise floor, 7 dB extremely, extremely quiet. These are going through the Lewitt LCT Connect 6. Its pre-amplifiers are extremely, extremely quiet. So you have a really clean signal that's coming through. Either of these microphones in that interface would make for a really good, robust <laughs> voiceover sort of vocal chain. But I think we'll notice that these two sound different. First is that the 540 is a solid state. It's got transistors for its amplification. There's some other features that the 540 has. It's got a different bass roll off. So if I was trying to mimic the same sort of functionality of the pure tube, I might choose the 80 hertz roll off, uh, which I've just switched on. So I could pull away some of that bass at recording time, the same way that the pure tube is doing it but we should notice also that they do have a difference in tone let me just take that high pass filter off so now i'm back to the sort of pure signal for both of them but that's an example of the difference between two very naturally selected voiceover microphones from lewitt this is the 540 and this is the pure tube so now you've at least had a chance to hear the difference between these two. Next up, we have two microphones that are very, very similar in price point and also are probably both going to be very strongly considered for your forever voiceover microphone. And that is the Pure Tube next to the Neumann TLM 103. The Neumann TLM 103 is also about $1,300, also very popular choice with voice actors. And the Neumann tends to have a Neumann kind of sound to it. It's known for for being a very bright mic so the s sounds might sound a little bit more prominent you may also get the sensation that there's more detail neumann has its own sound you you tend to um pay the neumann tax a little bit so a lot of people think that their prices are more expensive because it's a Neumann, I'll let you decide. But ultimately, I've had this Neumann for years and years. They're very reliable. But I've also had my Lewitt microphones for now, my five, my 540 I've had for years. And it's been, again, extremely durable, extremely reliable. And I would not expect the Pure Tube to be anything anything different. The microphone that we have here now is the very similarly priced Warm WA 8000. This is their microphone that is inspired by Sony's sort of ultra famous, really stratospherically priced microphone called the C800G. That microphone's like $10,000, $12,000, something like that. And I think that these two will show the differences in, in maybe how tubes can sound. My impression of the WA8000 is that it is a very bright microphone, gives the perception of being ultra detailed without it feeling, ironically, warm. Even though it's made by the company Warm, it's made to be clinical is not the right word, uh, but very bright and very detailed. I think uh, part of the inspiration for it was a, a lot of like hip hop artists uh, use this microphone to to rap into the, the Sony C800G. And so I think Warm was trying to, to lean into that to try and get that same sort of zhuzh of what that what a hip hop producer might be looking for with when, when you're rapping and try and capture that in a more moderately priced microphone. I've had this microphone for a while yet, but I don't think I've done a review on it before. We'll uh, we'll do a review on this at, uh, at another time. But that's the that's the warm WA8000 compared to the Lewitt Pure tube. Next up, we've got a little bit something different. This is the Neumann U87 AI microphone. Now, price comparison wise, the Neumann is probably I don't know, three times as expensive. I think it's about $3,600 at this point. But this is another one of those sort of reference voiceover microphones you find it. It's got a lot of history to it, so you find it in a lot of studios. I will say that the U87 has its own tone, and that tone isn't for everyone. Some people describe it as dull. I don't know if that's the case, but there is a little something different in the mid-range from the Neumann than I think um, the U87 sort of typifies that Neumann sound, that at least their, their solid state sound. I, I don't have a lot of experience with their tube microphones. It's got its own sound. It's... Um, 
you know, it's it's the Neumann U87. Okay, next up, we have a microphone that's a bit more expensive than the Pure Tube. This is the Soyuz 17 FET. You'll see it as 017. You might hear it referred to as the 017, but this is the FET version of that microphone. Soyuz also makes a tube version of that microphone, which is really, really expensive, about $4,200, $4,600. This one, I think, is uh, generally around $2,000, $2,100. And another one that is gaining popularity in the voiceover world is one of those for, forever microphones. Uh, and I think it's, you know, because it's got its own character, its own type of sound. So I use sort of makes these microphones that have their own character. These both have a similar, a similar philosophy to them. They're simplified microphones. They're, they're, they're bringing the microphone back to its essence. Lewitt's made a, they talk about how there's no semiconductors inside of it. The Soyuz is also like that. Inside, there's just resistors and capacitors. There's nothing, uh, they're very simple. There's no circuit board inside the, the 017. And so here's the Pure Tube with its own character. And we listen to see if there's a double the price or $800 more in price for the sound difference. And finally, we have sort of the the big sibling to the pure tube and that's the Lewitt LCT 1040. It's hard to do an apples to apples comparison to anything with the 1040 because the 1040 is very much a chameleon. It can be many different kinds of microphones by its control panel. So this is a very technologically sophisticated microphone. It is both a transistor microphone and a tube microphone, and you can dial in how much of each of those amplification processes you want. This is a multi-pattern microphone. It can be omni, cardioid, figure eight, wide cardioid, super cardioid, hyper cardioid, anywhere in between. It's infinitely adjustable. You can adjust the way the tube itself sounds for different characteristics of its tube. So clear, dark, warm, and saturated. I'll switch through each one of those. You've been listening to the clear so far. So this is how it sounds sort of in its perhaps its most neutral state. So now I've switched it over to the warm setting for the pure tube. So I would think that this would be the closest matchup between the two. If I had to guess as far as trying to configure the 1040 to sound like the pure tube, this would probably be my instinct in how to set it. But I don't know if they're going to sound the same. As we go back and forth between them, do they sound the same? So we'll move now to the dark setting on the tube. So the dark setting, we may notice that there's a, a slight uh, change in the high end response for the 1040. So if you remember back to the uh, to the warm audio, WA8000, bright microphone, turn those treble frequencies way up, try and make it a really bright microphone. This is doing very much the opposite. It's trying to darken some of that. Uh, turn down some of that higher frequency, retaining the detail, but making it sound a bit darker, just to give you a different a different sense. And then finally, the last switch is what they call the saturated. So this will add just a tiny bit of harmonics that uh, that will be often described as being pleasant. Adding those harmonics, that slight bit of distortion can sometimes make the microphone actually sound better. So that's the saturated aspect of the 1040. Whew, okay, that's the 1040. We'll take that out of the way. We'll just come back to the pure tube to finish it off. Great big thank you to Lewitt for sending me this microphone. If you stuck around this far, if you found it helpful, please give it a like, <laughs> leave a comment, tell me what you think. You've made it this far. Holy cow. Come talk about it on the Booth Junkie Discord. We'd love to talk to you about microphones over there. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. I hope it helps. I really do. I really hope it helped. Uh, and that's all I have for you today. Now, get out there, get yourself a microphone, maybe a nice little stripped down tube, warm microphone, but get yourself a microphone so that you can get out there and you can record something amazing. That's it. That's all I got for you today. Thanks a lot. Take care.